Hi, my name is Simon Solotko with Advanced Micro Devices, and today you're about to watch the AMD Father's Day special, starring ATI Stream Technology, Cyberlink Media Espresso, and Cyberlink PowerDirector 7 software applications. ATI Stream Technology from Advanced Micro Devices will help to speed the process along. Using these software applications, we're able to translate our video to multiple formats faster than we could without ATI Stream Technology. In two hours, we're going to create our own home video, never having used video editing software before. Cyberlink Power Director appears to have various stages of creating and ultimately outputting a video. It looks like we begin with capturing the video content. We are then able to edit the video content, and then we're able to produce or render the video content out to our desired format. We're also able to create a disk. This seems easy enough. As with many other applications, we have a number of buttons that we can hover over, and it will explain what those buttons do. Below, it looks like we've got a timeline for our video. By placing our video and our content into these various tracks, it looks like we're going to be able to create the flow of our home video. I'll open the folder that has the video tracks that I'm interested in importing. I'll then drag and drop them into Cyberlink Power Director. And sure enough, they show up nicely. I've just copied seven video files into my media library simply by dragging and dropping them into the workspace. Now that they're in the workspace, the first clip I'll drag into the media timeline. And that worked nicely. I'll expand to full view. The second clip I will drag into the video timeline. And there it is. This seems easy enough. I'll continue to drag and drop my clips, and then we'll try to order them in the order I want to ultimately play them back. As you can see, I can easily drag each video clip into a different position in the video timeline. If I want a video to be closer to the beginning, I move it up, and if I want a video to be closer to the end, I simply move it back. I'm also able to extend the duration of any clip within that timeline simply by selecting its perimeter and dragging it forward or backward. You can think of this as cropping a video clip. If I want the video clip to be shorter or begin later in the video, I move to the right, and longer, I move to the left. As you can see, I'm only going to select those portions of the clips that I want to use in my final video. I'm also able to rapidly scan the video such that I can quickly edit it. By selecting this top pointer, I'm able to move through my video timeline such that I can see what's a part of the video and what's not and then easily select where it is that I wish to trim or crop my video. Once I've completed a brief sequence, I can scan through that sequence to make sure it's exactly what I want. If I want to view the entire movie and to view those transitions, I simply select the Movie button, move my pointer to the beginning point, and then I can press Play, and now I'm able to see the video clips, the transitions, as they'll be rendered in my final video. As you can see with each transition, it's currently a hard cut. I bet I'll be able to insert an effect to create smoother transitions. And this application has a lot of cool transition effects, and we're gonna see how to use them now. To use transitions, I simply select the transition room option in the upper left-hand navigation. These are a number of transition effects and a lot of them create incredibly cool, well-produced effects. I'm going to select an effect called Drain. And then I can simply drag and drop that effect into my video. I'll select it again, and I'll insert it into another portion of the video. Now, to view these transitions, I'll simply select the Movie option in my player. I will scroll just to the point before the transitions, and we'll be able to watch them. I'm also able to add text and titles to my video. We'll go through and do that now. To add text, I select the icon Title Room on the upper left-hand navigation. I'm able to double-click to add text in any of the given formats or effects that are selected. I'm going to select the Vacation effect. I'll drag it into the video. I will move it towards the beginning, 
and now we will enter the text in the editing window that's appeared. I've never done any of this before, it just works intuitively as you think it ought to. All I'm doing is selecting text effects and dragging and dropping them into the text title track. I'm then able to double click and edit the text for each section. As you can see, I'm able to create, modify, and play back video effects in real time. I'm able to create an effect and very quickly scan through and watch how that effect impacts my final video. Let's review the steps we've taken so far. First, we selected and imported the clips into the application. Then, we edited those clips into the right size and position within our movie. Then, we added transitions and text effects to the video to make it flow more smoothly. Now, we're going to have to go into the next step, which is to render that video out to a desired format and then to burn our own disks. To move to the next step, I select the Produce option. In the Produce option, it looks like I have the option to view the video, and then it outlines in step one I can create a file, create a streaming file, write it back to tape, or create a hard disk drive camcorder file, or I can post to YouTube. These are all great options. I'm going to start out by creating a file. The file I'm going to create first is one compatible with a portable media player so that I can easily watch this video on the go. To do that, I'll select Portable MPEG-4. I'll select Best Quality, and I'll simply move to the next step. I now have the option to name that file, and I have a few important checkboxes. One of them is Enable GPU Hardware Video Encoder. This is how we're able to take advantage of ATI Stream technology. With ATI Stream technology, we're going to be able to faster produce the output file. In this case, an H.264 portable media device file. ATI Stream technology works by distributing the processing task across the processor and the graphics processor. By doing so, we're able to more quickly encode or create that file. To begin, I'll simply press Start Rendering. The rendering has begun. The application will provide an estimated time for completing the render. Using ATI Stream technology, the encode goes very quickly. It only took us 41 seconds to take a five-minute video and translate it into the H.264 video format ready for playback on my portable media device. Let's take a look at how the video, the transitions, and the text effects work together in the final video. As you can see, we've been able to create a home video for playback on a portable media device. Now we'll try the same experiment again without ATI Stream technology. We will deselect the Enable GPU Hardware Video Encoder, and we'll start rendering again. With ATI Stream technology, we were able to render the video over 50% faster than without. That's a significant savings of time, and it shows the performance capabilities of ATI Stream technology in accelerating home video creation. To create a DVD disc, I'm going to select the Create Disc option. As you can see, it's automatically inserted a template for my DVD menus. I can select different templates and apply those to my movie file. Each of these templates creates a different look and feel. I think I like template 5. It's clean and it's three-dimensional. And now you can see how I can navigate chapters by using this new navigation that the application has created in my DVD menu. The final step is to burn a disk and to test the DVD. To do that, we'll simply select the Burn option. We'll select our drive. We can give the disk a name and the number of copies, and we'll press OK, and it'll burn a disk. The burn process was successful. Now we're going to test our DVD to see if we'll be able to play it back on our home DVD player. To do that, I insert it and I've opened it with Windows Media Player. And as you can see, our menu's working great. I have the play option, or I can select individual chapters. Now friends and family will be able to enjoy my daughter's first violin recital on their home DVD player. They don't need a PC, they'll simply be able to use the disc and play it back at home.